Moshi Moshi, my gamers, and welcome back to Genji Impact. Today, we'll continue doing the next hangout event. Here's the deal, guys. Depending how long this is, I might just end up doing like one more part after this because depending how long it is. Wait, well, damn it, we're gonna skip button now? We've been waiting for this. Okay, so now I'm gonna say wait and see how things play out. That letter? I was the one who wrote it. What? Gina? So it was you? Director, it's time for you. Oh, okay. Weird energy here. Yeah, different voices. Came at a bad time. Uh, I don't think so. And that I, Gina must have been worried sick about me. I'm sure even she wouldn't do something so stupid if she was in her right mind. I'm so sorry. I promise I'll make it up to you somehow. Uh, Jillian, no. This is completely my fault, and I'm the one who should have to bear the consequences. I got the wrong end of the stick and completely misjudged Lynette. Shall we hear what Lynette has to say? Well, since I haven't actually suffered any losses, seeking redress could be difficult. Maybe we could just let this one slide? Really? Are you sure? After all, Gina wouldn't be the first person to ever misjudge me, right? Ah, uh, true. True. In any case, I think we can all agree it was a misunderstanding and nothing more. No need to overcomplicate things. But still, I was wrong to write that letter. I should own up to my actions, make it up to you in some way. Kids at this age are really stubborn. Hmm. If that's what you really want, then how about helping out backstage? Uh huh? Backstage? The crew could always use an extra hand. Plus, it'll give your older sister a chance to keep an eye on you and stop you getting into any more trouble. Thank you, Lynette. Really, thank you so much. There you go. Oh, the ending I'm guessing? Oh, okay. The world of the events really finally resolved. A few days later? <sighs> You're finally awake. <sighs> Is it? <sighs> I'm so much more at home here in the audience. I get to sit on a comfy seat, and I don't have to activate my energy-consuming modes all the time. Sounds like Gina got more than she bargained for out of that backstage job. Mary, you said she's a very promising young actress, and she has natural chemistry with her older sister. In their capable hands, the show doesn't need me to attract an audience anymore. <sighs> Freedom at last. Hmm, fame was right around the corner. Hmm... Fame is more trouble than it's worth. I'd rather leave that side of things to my brother and the others. I'm happiest when I get to sit in a quiet place, watch them do their thing, and cheer them on. Like you're doing now? Yep, exactly like I'm doing now. Alright, that's pretty sweet. That's me. A seat in the audience. Well, there is so much performance stage, there will be other clapping in the audience. Enjoying the show, family. Wow, this show is amazing. Why am I sing alone? Because, yes. Now, we got different choices here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna pick... I'm gonna pick the top left. I think you should head back to the drink reception. <sighs> back to the drinks reception. I mean, clearly you don't want to go. You could just... Nope, I said it was your decision. I'm not gonna waste any more energy dragging my feet. Besides, the drinks reception is technically part of the job as an official publicity event. So, if I bail on it, I might get sued for breach of contract, and that would be a huge pain in the butt. Oh, one other thing. Do you want to come with me? If you're free, I mean. Hopefully they will make it more playable. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any difference? I gotta check it out first. And no, it did not. Let's just say I think you should help Bonnie. So we're looking for Bonnie's owner? So how do you plan to find Bonnie's owner? Um, I think I'll go to the Steambird and see about putting an ad in the paper. You wanna come along? I think Bonnie wants you to come with. Sure, if it means I get to hang out with you for a bit longer. I mean, it's Charlotte Heal. Well, I don't know if she's Heal doing this hangout event. Every stupendous day starts with a steambird. Oh, hi Lynette. Hi Traveler. What can I help you with? Hmm. Uh, any commission is there about a missing cat? Hmm. I don't think so. 
Have you picked up a stray? Yep. If there's no commission to follow up on, could we post a notice about the missing cat instead? Why, of course. What a kind thing to do. Just fill out the form. Yep, there we go. No, that's done. Well, we've registered you as missing. You can stay at my place until your owner finds you. Also, I just wanted to say thanks for keeping us company for so long. Well, I should probably head back to the drinks reception. Hopefully most of the people have left by now. If you've got some time, you should stop by my place tomorrow to see Bonnie. There's a nice cup of tea in it for you. I'll be there. All right. See you then. I hope I see Lenny and Femini, including Father. Oh boy, what is going on the house? Hey! Are you guys the owners? Yeah, he probably are. I believe this cat belongs to me. I already told you, this isn't your cat. Uh, just take a breather, you two. What the hell is going on? Oh, you're here. As you can probably see, you'll have to take a rain check on that tea I promised you. At least for now. This is my friend's cat. He's preoccupied with some important business, so I came to retrieve her in his stead. The latest seems a bit unnatural. The way she speaks is this loud and authoritative. It's like she deliberately using her tone of voice to display any trouble about her. No, no. It's far more likely this cat to escape from the Humane Society. How about we let Bonnie decide? Uh, Bonnie? Uh that's the name I've given her in the meantime. Animal heading. Let's see who's brought decide to approach. Oh, we're doing this too? Okay, when did my zine click? There you go. That's 15. Oh shit, that's big! Okay, go on. Bonnie happily went up to you and begins to wave through your legs. Well, this complicates things. Mm, there's no way to tell who the owner is. I told you before. This is my friend's cat. It's normal for her not to trust me. Listen, I'm the director of the Humane Society, okay? We've got so many strays, dogs, cats, you name it. I'm not even the one feeding them most of the time. You can hardly expect the cat to recognize me. Then how are you go how are you so sure she belongs to you? She just looked somewhat familiar, so I came to check just in case. If she turns out to be one of ours, I'll take her back. Simple as that. Even if that's not the case, the Humane Society could still take her in, if no one else comes to claim her, that is. What's the Humane Society? Ah, we're an organization that specializes in rescuing and sheltering stray animals. We've been in business for several decades now. I'm Bernard, the current director. The Humane Society? Huh. The name sounds familiar. I remember hearing good things. You're the one in the Cartier Lyonnais? Yes, yes, that's the one. Anyway, um, if it's not too much trouble, could I possibly take a closer look at the cat? If it turns out I really am mistaken, I suppose that means the cat belongs to this lady here. She would be the only remaining option after all. It belongs to my friend. Well, let's hear the keyboard. It should be fine. Go on, Bonnie. Say so, okay. Hmm. Oh, nope. Looks like I was mistaken. They do Baka. look similar, but there's an ever so slight difference in this one's fur color. Deepest apologies, friends. Well, I suppose this means I still have a missing cat to search for. Apologies again for the confusion. <laughs> so, it, this, is this your friend's cat? Mm. Oh, uh, yes, exactly. Wait a second. You lied earlier, didn't you? Lied? I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. A liar always has a tell. The look in their eyes, their breathing pattern, the way they hold themselves. The things that can give you away are often more numerous than you would think. What are you talking about? The way I see it, you're conflating baseless conjecture with fact. Normally, when someone is called out, their breathing speeds up as they begin to panic. But your breathing pattern hasn't changed one bit. In fact, it's been strangely calm and measured this entire time. It stands to reason, then, that your agitated behavior earlier was all an act. If you're a bad guy, I'm sure you'll take off running the first chance you get. If you're a good guy, the most likely explanation is that you're a member of the Guards, or some similar organization. And you're basing this off of... Intuition. Nothing more. 
Intuition. Well, I have to hand it to you, Lynette. You're right. I'm a member of the Guards. The name's Elodie. I'm currently investigating a cross-border smuggling case. This cat here... Bonnie, what's her name? Well, her owner is one of the prime suspects of our investigation. A couple of days ago, our suspect got wind that we were on his tail and fled. That's most likely how he got separated from the cat. I just so happened to stumble upon your notice in the Steambird. So, I decided to see if he'd come back for her. But... It looks like I overestimated him. Hmm. If I were on the one... The impact of this case has been huge. The Marichose Phantom, the guards, and the Special Patrol have all launched investigations. If there was even the slightest chance that he would show himself, I had to follow up on the lead. So, what's being smuggled? A new kind of illegal drug. Imitation synth. We confiscated all the synth on the market, but addiction isn't something that goes away overnight. Even without substances on the market, people are still looking for a way to get their next fix. And criminals are all too eager to capitalize on that addiction. That was the impetus for imitation synth. Needless to say, a small-scale market opened up very quickly. After the original synth debacle, we put several measures into place to prevent similar incidents from occurring. The perpetrators got smart, though, and shifted their sales overseas before those measures could kick in. That's when the imitation synth smuggling began. We only recently got word of the presence of imitation synth overseas. We managed to track down evidence of some early transactions. What we were able to find out, however, hasn't proven that useful given the amount of time that has passed. The Marichose Phantom launched an investigation to track down every person in Fontaine capable of producing a drug like that. That's how we learned about Bonnie's owner. Who is he exactly? He's a researcher at the Fontaine Research Institute. His name is Pierre. Pierre Lafayette, to be exact. Lafayette. This one seems to be unnatural. I slightly look up Jay just cross Lynette's face. Strange. She's usually school her expression with the monitical positions. The Marchose Phantom found him in Poisson. In addition to the cat, he also had a pendant with him. Oh, look at that. At first, there wasn't much cause for suspicion. A search of his house didn't reveal much to go off of either. The Marchose Phantom very nearly left it at that. It was only later that we realized the coat of arms on his pendant belonged to none other than the Lafayette family. One of the most infamous aristocratic families in Fontaine. Obviously, this discovery prompted a further investigation into Pierre. At that point, however, we discovered that he'd already fled. Now the guards and the special patrol are all searching for him. Could his family be hiding him? That's not possible, actually. The Lafayette family has been gone for a long time. Exactly. Many years ago, several important members of the family, including the patriarch, were murdered by an assassin of unknown origin. From that point on, family's power and influence took quite the hit. The family is engaged in all manner of crimes. As you can imagine, there's no shortage of people waiting in the wings to take their revenge. And with the family severely weakened, they were able to do just that. Most of the remaining family members succumbed to sickness or hunger. The ones that Pierre is one of those very survivors. He's been hiding away in the Fontaine Research Institute all these years. His true identity unbeknownst to all. Until now, that is. Is it really okay to share all this information with us? Well, my fellow guards have told me all about how smart and courageous you both are. And I know you possess a strong sense of justice. There could be a chance that Pierre, or one of his accomplices, might attempt to get close to Bonnie. Now that you've been briefed on the situation, I was hoping you'd help us keep a lookout. If I take Bonnie back to the guards with me, there's no way Pierre will try and come for her. Not even the most daring of criminals would attempt something like that. Gee, so we should keep Bonnie with us for the time being. I have to admit, I'm not holding out too much hope that Pierre will come back for her. But if there's even the slightest chance, then it's worth a shot. Well, I've got some other leads to follow up on. If Pierre does appear, please contact me right away. Yeah, shy. <laughs> mm, you don't look so good. It's nothing. I'm fine. It's just... The head of the Lefebvre family. He was the 
eminent person who kidnapped me all those years ago. What? It was at a is dinner this, party. Is this some loy you got to heal? Someone tricked me into boarding the Lefebvre family carriage. However it was, they took me back to their home. But before anything worse could happen, father intervened. Good, good. Then the assassin the Elo dimension. Yep. Father was the one who orchestrated the fall of the Lefevere family. That's what led Lenny and I to join the House of the Hearth after That's all these good. years. I never thought I'd hear the Lefevere name again. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I was just thinking about Lenny. <gasps> He's been acting strange recently. He avoids me for days on end, consumes himself with some secret investigation, and then out of the blue pushes me to do that acting job. Thinking about it now, it's almost like the one I drew from that deck of cards was part of his plan all along. He must have asked Fremenay to help him out. In any case, I know he's hiding something from me. He's really pulled out all the stops this time. You think he knows about P.O.E.? It's very possible. I'm sure he tried to send me away because he was afraid it would bring up some painful memories for me. It wasn't necessary though. Even after all these years, he's still as overprotective as ever. You'll have to help me teach him a lesson if we run into him along the way. Along the way? Are we going somewhere? Yep. I want to head to the Fontaine Research Institute to learn more information about Pierre. Just let me activate search mode and then we'll head out. Who knows? Maybe we'll run into Linny along the way. Oh, are you trying to prove yourself? A little bit of both, perhaps. For the most part, though, I just have the sense that something's not right. Something isn't adding up about Pierre's story. I'm just not sure what. I also want to know what secrets he's hiding. Okay, I'll write a letter explaining everything to the crew. Once that's done, we can head out. Okay, good. Interesting. So, this place and Shivers and Lenny. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Lynette, you're uh, not at rehearsal? You can drop the act, brother. In fact, I don't think either of us will have a need for acting anytime soon. You should know better than to try and keep something from me. You've never been able to do that, even when we were kids. <sighs> and that's why I tried to distract you with the masked mime show. But I guess you're just too good. Care to introduce us to your new assistant? <clears throat> this is Officer Shavras, captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. You may have met her already. We meet again, Shavras. Nice to see you. I should clarify something. Mr. Lenny's here at my invitation, not the other way around. To borrow your expression, Miss Lynette, I suppose that would make him my assistant more than anything. We've brought on Mr. Lenny as a consultant in the past. He was instrumental in helping us crack a case involving a perpetrator who used magic tricks to commit crimes. I was hoping he'd be able to provide some valuable insight this time around as well. Are you here because of the love of theory case? Ah, uh, so you've heard everything then? That's exactly why we're here. There's always been questions surrounding the fall of the Lefebvre family. Oh, Lefebvre. Some people even believe the House of the Hearth was involved. Whoever was behind it all was extremely cautious. They didn't leave a shred of evidence. This very fact, however, leads me to believe it was indeed the work of that harbinger. I took a look at the entrance and exit records of all the carriages that night. Let's just say it wasn't hard to deduce that there's ill will between you two. Don't worry, I don't have any evidence to that effect, and I certainly don't plan on going to bat for such a despicable family. Plus, you were victims back then more than anything. I sought Mr. Linney's help with the smuggling case. Nothing more. You really deal with the House of the Hearth? The way I look at it, it's a collaboration between us as people, not the organizations we represent. Besides, by working together, we can expose the truth as quickly as possible. You can hardly say that's at odds with the justice my organization strives for. I'm assuming you wouldn't be opposed to some extra help? Not at all. I was planning to invite you from the very beginning, Miss Lynette. It's just that my assistant here raised some objections. Um... Uh... He's like, don't be my sister, please. Lenny, I'm not the same person I was back then. That little girl who did nothing but cower in the corner in fear. She doesn't need saving anymore. Hmm. 
I know you want to take your own e chan. <sighs> I'm sorry, Lynette. You're right. I let my concerns get the better of me. Oh, and the next time you want to distract me, you should try a different approach. Who's this? You pick up a stray while I was gone? Uh, it's a bit complicated. I'll explain later. Anyway, her name's Bonnie. Well, if there are no objections, then I suppose the only thing left to say is... Lynette? Traveler? Welcome to the team. Mm, nice. Travelers and Lily's share with you was the learn over the, the past few days. family was very particular in their use of insignias and emblems. The family would use different emblems to mark differences in status, blood relation, and the like. In fact, the insignia that was discovered on the pendant was used to represent an illegitimate child. So that would mean Pui is a bastard child? It's highly likely. That very status might have been what allowed him to emerge from the fall of his family relatively unscathed. It would also explain why he was able to assume a new identity as a researcher with relative ease. We discovered something interesting, though. After talking to some of his co-workers, it appears he pretty much works at the Institute in name only. He's practically been cast out. Wait, what happened? Apparently, Pierre was once addicted to synth. He tried to use the resources at the Institute to create a substance with a similar effect. He claimed it was just for research purposes, but the Institute revoked his access to the relevant materials regardless. He was placed on disciplinary leave, pending a thorough investigation of his actions. But it seems the Institute ran into some trouble along the way. Could have been a lack of personnel or a timing issue. In any case, they had to table their formal investigation into Pierre. Unfortunately, that also included reporting any relevant information to the higher authorities. As for his family background, it appears none of his co-workers at the Institute were aware of that information. All they could tell us was that he was quite the recluse. Hmm, maybe we'll have to take our investigation elsewhere then. Other than the pendant, we didn't find anything else of note at his residence in Poisson. Based on the samples of imitation synth we've been able to analyze, it appears the substance leaves behind strong traces wherever it's produced or stored. Those traces might not be obvious to the casual observer, but they're not something our guard poodles would miss. Pierre's home, though, came up completely clean. We didn't find any records indicating possible involvement in overseas transactions either. So, the Marachose Phantom didn't view him as a major suspect at first. Hmm. Maybe he had a separate, dedicated area where he made the imitation synth. Well, his neighbors did say he was often gone for long stretches of time. You would think with him out and about so much, people would have spotted him around Poisson, but residents said they barely ever saw him in town. If his reclusive nature was just a matter of keeping a low profile, I guess it would make sense for him to have a secret base to carry out his business. After he disappeared, the guards conducted a thorough search of Poisson. But they didn't come across any suspicious locations. Poisson. What is it, the net? You know Hotel de Boer, where I first found Bonnie? To get there from Poisson, you have to cross a stretch of ocean. It's not somewhere a cat could just wander off on its own. A cat? You mean... Bonnie is Pierre's cat. Oh, that's right! When the Marachose Phantom first tracked him down, I remember there being something about a cat in their report. So this is her? From what we've learned about Pierre's habits, he doesn't seem like the type to venture out without a purpose. So what you're saying, Lynette, is that Bonnie couldn't have gone missing in Poisson. If that's true, then... She must have wandered off only after Pierre brought her to his secret base. Exactly. Bonnie might even know where it is. Wait, you think the cat can lead us there? But she's not trained like one of our guard poodles. How is she supposed to understand what we want her to do? Hmm. Oh, we got two choices. I'm gonna pick not the animal head, so I'm gonna pick the tall one. Then I could give it a try. Meow. Meow, meow. Meow? That is so cute. I mean, she is a half cat, because she could say it. She's like, meow, 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 meow. Near the coast, the beach, and beneath the cliffs. The place we're looking for is most likely north of the Court of Fontaine. Oh. Well, I've certainly never taken a witness statement like this before. <laughs> well, if it works out, maybe it's something worth getting used to. Cats and humans are actually pretty alike. When it comes to communication, 
most of what we want to convey can be accomplished through body language alone. But humans tend to rely too much on speech to ever take advantage of that fact. Of course, body language has its limitations. You're not going to be able to get across anything too complicated. The important thing is that we now have a lead. Let's try and find a place that matches the clues Bonnie gave us. Oh yeah, let's move out. It's like we're next to the teleport way. That is so hilarious. That's where we're going. Next to that location where the others are. So it's like, like right here apparently. To some domain maybe? Seems like Bonnie is trying to take us somewhere. Okay. Show us the way, Bonnie. Ooh. Kitty. You just follow the cats. Are these shells? Oh, it is. Oh, I see some Guardians bells. Look out! Letty, you got this. We got siblings and Nouvellet on our side. See, only chat? I'm not weak! I got dial vision! Dial vision, you idiot! We got family. Oh, you missed! You missed this one. Ooh, watch it, watch it, watch it. Ooh, ouch, all buddy. Die, come on! Dragon Ball Z, though, ass, come on. Ah! There you go. Alright. That's nice. Was that a distraction? I'm trying to blast you away, like, come on. Yeah, keep blasting them away. Almost done. What? Hey, are you serious? Okay, keep going. Yeah, that crazy. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, blast them. Come on, come Oh, wow, 12k per blast. That's how it's gone for Nubulet. Alright, keep going, keep blasting, you're done. Alright, blast them away. Wee. Okay, that's not too bad. I don't care what he says. I'm with it? That's pretty ass. But Lenny, though, he's doing good damage. It's more than my Ganyu, apparently. That's crazy. And take from Lenny to blast it away. Nice. So that's the base, okay? I was looking at that like, hmm, it's probably that location. Oh, wait. What's in here? Wow, Lynette. You found this place so easily. If I thought there was any chance you'd say yes. I'd recruit you into the special patrol here and now. No questions asked. <laughs> Sounds familiar. I pretty much receive letters daily from people trying to poach her from me. Let's just focus on our search. There's a lot to investigate. Yes, there is. What well, I sound just think Oh, never mind. Hmm. I'm gonna start with Shiva's like point of view first. I mean there's three actually. Hold up. <laughs> Let me look for a... What's the third one? There is. Oh, with the cats! Mm, no, there'll be lads, because she's behind so I'm gonna start with the boys. What is this? The material these bags are made of... It's quite rare. Hmm... Does it look similar to the material used for your magic pocket? It's the very same, actually. Romaritime flower fiber. But there's something special about the composition of these bags. I took a closer look, and it appears they're not only waterproof, but also corrosion and leak resistant. Even the strings look specially designed to keep the bags closed nice and tight. I came across some bags made of the same material just now, but they were much smaller and thinner. From the look of them, they seemed far less durable as well. So, kind of like one of those small sealed bags. Very similar, actually. Normally, it would be easy for a guard poodle to sniff out the imitation synth, but if it was sealed away in a bag like that, it might be possible to elude detection for some time. But what could these big bags be for then? If the goal is to keep the imitation synth hidden and sealed away, these bags seem a bit too conspicuous. Hmm, I mean, yeah, that's why not. Oh, well, let's go to servers next. Aha! Just as we thought. This is where the imitation synth was being made. So many drugs! These bottles and jars, they're all imitation- imitation synth. Looks like he's got more than just imitation synths stashed around here. In addition to the raw materials needed to synthesize the substance itself, there's a large quantity of cleaning agents and a few drugs I haven't been able to identify. These cleaning agents are likely used to dispel traces of the substance, like its smell. The special patrol did some digging into imitation synth. 
Our records indicate that it's very difficult for ordinary people to detect traces left behind by the stuff. I'm sure that was the case for Pierre as well. It must mm -hmm. have taken a considerable amount of time and skill to ensure all those traces get washed away. But what are these other drugs for? Oh yeah. Like, oh, damn, that's kind of disgusting if you ask me. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. What did the cat say? I have no fucking idea. Yo, cat! When the Mar Chaussee Phantom searched Pierre's house, there was no sign of these barrels, right? He must have moved them, but carrying them all the way out here will attract way too much attention. Hmm. You're right. That doesn't seem like his way of doing things. How did he get them here then? Examine the barrels. The barrels show signs of water damage. Dried up water stains can be seen around the coral fences of the barrels. There seems to be a pattern of the location of the water stain. For what reason, they appear to be limited to the lower half of the barrel. The lids don't seem very light leaving separate gaps around the edges, but there doesn't appear to be traces of the water inside the barrier. Only the lower halves of the barrels appear to have been submerged in water. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, right, we got three down. So, next Based objective? On the various ingredients we found, this appears to be where Pierre was cooking up his imitation scent. It looks like he used a special cleaning agent to get rid of any residual traces of the substance on his person before he left. That's how he was able to get past the guard poodles. Oh, that's why the Megasus Phantom didn't find anything sus in the home. So then he transferred the imitation synth into small sealed bags and took it somewhere else for the drop-off. No. I don't believe our suspect is the kind of person who'd go around carrying incriminating evidence with him. That would potentially create too many eyewitnesses. The cleaning agent and the sealed bags might get past the guard poodles. But if a member of the public, or even a guard on patrol, happened to see him during the drop-off, a quick search would reveal everything. That's still a very risky operation. What about if the drop-off happened at sea? There'll be no one around to see him. The barrels we found were wet around the base, but the top half was dry. As if they'd been standing upright in the water. Oh, uh, yeah, look at that. Hmm. If you put a barrel in the water, it will normally float on its side. Unless it's heavily loaded, in which case it'll sink. Hmm. Two tight seal of big bags followed up ale. Turning them into a light flotation devices. Yes. With flotation rings around the body of the barrels, they'd stay upright in the water. And then he could afford to load them more fully. Yeah, like, ooh, that's interesting. You think he used floating barrels? Hmm. I suppose if he acted at night, when there are very few other boats around and visibility is low, it's a valid theory. We can't rule it out. But then, wouldn't the barrels be carried off by the waves or the currents? How would the person doing the pickup know where to look? Sounds simple to keep in one place, kind of like sudden pets. Traveler, can you come take a dip in the sea with me? I have a feeling that somewhere down there, we might find some rope. If a rope can be used to keep a pet from running away, then why not a barrel? Hmm. I mean, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a try. Okay, so it's like down here. So dive down and something. Ooh, it is. Oh, that was a chance. I was about to say, oh man. Oh, wait. There was like two things. Oh, wait, I'm going to heal up because I need some of that. All of us heal. Thank you. Yay, fishies. We've been blessed. This isn't the place. Hold up. And then next one is not this one. This isn't the place. I was like, what the hell, Trevor? Is a heal? The wreckage of a small boat? Oh, still to explode. Okay, um, let's keep swimming around here. Um, anything else? This is. Oh, yeah. Something's over there. Oh, yeah. What's this? Oh, well, yeah. Look at that. Time to go up and report. Report. Now swim up. Ah! Oh! oh god! Oh god! My nipples are popping till my outfit! Oh, don't look any! As expected, we found a few pieces of rope and some anchoring stones underwater. If you attach them to a floating barrel, it would look like this. Yeah, like that with a walk. With this anchoring system, it would be possible to use floating barrels for the drop off. You would just need to drop them in the water at the agreed-upon location. We also came across the wreckage of a small boat. It must have been left out on the water and capsized due to the force of the wind and waves. Its small size, however, 
would have made it perfect for staying undetected. Let's talk this through. Based on the evidence we've collected, it seems like Pierre would row a small boat out to the agreed-upon transfer point, drop off the barrels, leave, and then row back and retrieve them after the transfer was complete. Would it be easy for both parties to meet up at the transfer point of their respective vessel and exchange the goods right there and then? Then and there, I mean? It could be that he was trying to avoid meeting up with his associate face to face. Lenny's right. As one of the sole survivors of the Lafay Ver family, maybe he was just used to that sort of elusive lifestyle. It seems like Pierre deliberately chose the floating barrel method so that the goods could be dropped off and picked up at separate times. That way, the two parties wouldn't have to meet each other. Well, if that's the case, they must not have a very close working relationship. Let's not jump to any conclusions just yet. Assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. It's possible they were just trying to keep a low profile. Two boats sailing to the same location at once could be too conspicuous. The most important thing is that we can now confirm Pierre wasn't acting alone. The floating barrel drop-off system is proof enough of that. Let's say for now that he was only in charge of producing the imitation synth. That would mean there has to be at least one other person involved in the operation. Likely in charge of transporting the goods across the border. That explains why we couldn't find evidence linking him to any overseas operations. Since we've determined that the goods were transported by boat, maybe we can track down some travel logs or something. We can certainly check the various ports for that information. It's possible, however, that Pierre's associate also used a small boat for the transport and docked along the shore rather than at a large port. If that's the case, it's unlikely there would be any record left behind. Have you looked into the port already? Absolutely. Before Pierre disappeared, we made sure to investigate all sorts of outward bound vessels. We also had port authorities keep a lookout for anything suspicious. Unfortunately, we were never able to find out how they managed to get the imitation synth across the border. A small boat in a few bit isn't going to get you very far. You're right. Whatever vessel was used for the pickup, the person responsible for smuggling the substance out of Fontaine would have had to use a larger vessel for the actual transport. That's the only way they would be able to smuggle on a large enough scale to make a profit. They must have found a way to disguise the imitation synth to clear port inspections. Hmm. Well, even if we can't find any travel log... Exactly. We can't let any opportunity slip through the cracks. Although, given the amount of ports that could be involved, we should probably split up. I'll run home and ask some of my brothers and sisters to try and dig up some information. I should also head back and update my platoon on our progress. I'll grab some reinforcements while I'm at it. Lynette, Traveler, why don't you head to Lumidus Harbor and see what you can find out? All right. Come on, Bonnie. You too. Why am I doing this now? Okay, now, I've been here before. It looks pretty fun, actually. Or interesting to walk around this area. Now, I'm gonna talk to this guy in a uh, furry. Oh, Lynette, Traveler. And Bonnie, too. What brings you all here? She looks so different without the outfit. It's like, damn. Mm -hmm. Did something happen? We're here to check the travel logs. You're updating on the situation. Like, go oh. on. I see. Thank you for everything you're doing for the people of Fontaine. What are you doing here? I'm in charge of guarding the port. You mentioned you were after some travel logs, right? I can go fetch those for you. Yeah, sure, go ahead. She looks so different. Looks like I've got another hard day of work ahead of me. <sighs> are things usually pretty hectic around here? No, not usually. It's this incident that happened recently. Before that, everything was normal. All we had to do was confiscate anything suspicious and we could call it a day. Pretty simple stuff. But things are much more complicated now. We somehow let suspicious cargo pass through the port undetected. Not even our guard poodles were able to sniff it out. Even worse, we still don't know how the perpetrator was able to conceal the goods so well. By suspicious cargo, do you mean imitation synth? Yep. However, prohibited substances are just one example. We confiscate all sorts of contraband during the course of our inspections. Or at least, we're supposed to. So what happens to the goods you confiscate? Oh, we keep them in a storage locker. If they turn out to be something particularly dubious, we'll turn them over to the Maison Orderly. If the goods are only slightly suspicious but could otherwise be harmless, like raw materials that could potentially be used to create contraband, 
we return them to the ship they were confiscated from instead of letting them pass through the port. Sorry for the wait. These are the travel logs for all the recent activity at the port. Ooh. Oh, you brought Gerard with you. Uh, actually, he followed me here himself. It's like he smells something on me. A cat. Huh. I wonder why Gerard is reacting to you two so strongly. Whatever Gerard smelled on you probably came from us. Huh? We were so careful not to touch it, but we still ended up with traces on us. If it leaves a residue so easily, I just don't understand how the culprit was able to disguise the goods at all. Why don't you have a look at the travel logs first? All ships coming in and out of the port are recorded here, except for the ones the port authorities ride to and from work. Okay, you flip through the news news travel logs. You notice several instances where the human society is listed. The name really seems to stand out. The Humane Society. You encountered their own nation before, right? Their name is all over the exit logs. The purpose for leaving is always listed as overseas adoption. Ah, the director of the organization explained that, actually. He said a lot of the cat and dog breeds unique to Fontaine are also very popular overseas. So, his organization offers an overseas adoption program. Bernard, the director of the Humane Society, was the man who came looking for Bonnie earlier. Hmm, the cat that fled from Pierre looked just like the cat that the Humane Society is, is looking for. Could that really be a coincidence? It seems to be as if Bernard was also hiding something. He seems so instant, but only when a curiously checked before just leaving like that. When he came looking for Bonnie earlier, what if he wasn't actually there to check if Bonnie was his missing cat? Maybe he was there for some other purpose. Have you figured it out too, Traveler? The way the criminal disguised the goods? When Bernard asked to take a closer look at Bonnie, he was actually checking whether there was any imitation synth in her stomach. Hmm, he was using the animals as his seltzer. Uh, wait, what? The sealed bags we found at the secret base. They were specially made to be corrosion resistant. So that they wouldn't be disgusted. And there were gaps around the lids of the barrels, and airbags were used to keep them upright in the water. So that's the animal would be able to breathe. Those drug shepherds found at the secret base. She most likely didn't recognize them because they're not used on human beings. It's an anesthetic used on pets. The perpetrator must have given it to the animals. So that's they will keep still in the floating bales. Here. Must have made the animals swallow the sealed bags full of imitation synth at a secret base. Then he stuffed them into floating barrels and left the rest to Bernard. The sealed bags combined with an animal's body odor would certainly be enough to mask the scent of imitation synth. During our inspections, we would have never thought to inspect the bellies of those animals for anything suspicious. Even if we tried to feel around for something, I'm sure it would be difficult to detect. Exactly. I bet Bernard even transported animals with synth in their stomach alongside ones without. That way, it would be even harder to say with certainty that something was amiss. Do you think Bonnie could have imitated synth in her stomach? Mm, she's probably in the clear. Otherwise, Bernard would have never left without her. I'm guessing he didn't know whether Pierre had already hidden the next batch of imitation synth before he fled. Just imagine. He sees the notice we put in the Steambird, and it turns out that one of the very cats he gave to Pierre for the smuggling operation is out in the open, roaming the streets of Fontaine. If Pierre had already hidden the next batch of imitation synth, then Bonnie would practically be living proof of their crimes. He would have had no choice but to go after her. So, that's why he came to find you and insisted on taking a closer look at the cat. Hmm, the fact is probably what spread Bonnie. Ah, uh, wait a second, I'm a little lost here. I get the part about hiding the substance in the pets, but those, uh, what did you call them again? Floating barrels? Why even put the animals in there in the first place? If you've got something as convenient as a floating barrel, why not just stuff it with the imitation synth directly? Why not wait to hide the stuff until after the exchange has been made? In order to make sure the animals could swallow the sealed bags, they made them extremely thin. Had they not done that, the animals would have likely bitten or chewed through them. Hmm. Uh, they also would have needed a lot of cleaning agents to get rid of the resulting smell. That step would have required a lot of energy. 
as well as a certain amount of technical expertise. So, it was better left to the more experienced Pierre. We've already proven how easy it is to pick up trace amounts of imitation synth, so I'm sure Bernard was taking all the precautions he could to avoid the same fate. Okay. Then, let's head to the Humane Society right away and bring that guy to justice. I'll bring a Gardamek to speed up the process. Good idea. Let's kick some ass. Why are you looking at me like that? Hell, I was wondering, how the fuck a human get eels and tails? Oh, you think that? Are you also a fly? No, I have human skin. And you have a tail. That doesn't mean I'm a fly. So the Humane Society is not so far away. Wait a minute. All you tell you is like, right next to... Fu... Fuina's house? The Humane Society should be somewhere around here. Bernard could show up any moment now. Oh, here are the people from earlier. Wait, you're from... The guards? Oh, it was this guy. We're going after. after him. We can't let him get away. Yeah, speed up. Dan, Fuina, come out, help us. Boy, never mind. <sighs> what is that breathing? That's so weird. Watch out, Father. <laughs> Grabbed up, you. Bernard. Mercy. Have mercy. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything I know. The Humane Society has done so much good over the years. And yet you have committed such an atrocious deed in its name. Look, I didn't have a choice, okay? My father cared about those blasted animals so much, he didn't bother to take care of his human wife and son at all. While those animals were showered with love, I lived worse than a dog. No one asked. Tell me, how did you first get to know Pierre? Well, after I took over the Humane Society, it gradually became harder and harder to maintain its operations. Until one day, someone suddenly passed me a letter. It said that I could stand to get a large sum of money as long as I helped them to transport some animals abroad. It was only after a few such transports that I finally understood what I was really transporting. But then, Pierre wrote to me. Saying that we were already partners in crime and that I better keep cooperating with him if I didn't want to be reported to the guards. But well, it seems a bit unnatural. There was a hint of dissonance in his trembling voice. He's lying. You knew it from the very beginning, didn't you? The reason why you had to go through so many steps just to transport some animals. I'd suggest that you confess everything right now if you don't want to add anything else to your list of crimes. <laughs> Yes, officer. I would order wooden barrels and flotation devices according to his instructions, and then load the sleeping animals onto a boat. Once I sailed to the location he provided, I would dump everything together into the sea. And a few days after that, I'd come by again in my boat and pick up the animals sleeping in the barrels. Once I had received enough of them, I'd bring them to the harbor to be adopted abroad. That guy, Pierre, he was running the entire show. He set up all the meeting times and found all the foreign adopters. Oh, oh, and he even supplied all of the goods, too. I just did the transport. He was the one who planned out and executed everything else. So, where is he now? Look, I don't know, okay? I've never, ever met him in person. We've only ever communicated through letters. And when did he send his final letter to you? J just last night. He said that the Marshalsea Phantom is now after him, so he's planning to go into hiding for some time. He didn't mention where he's thinking about going, though. B but he did tell me to look out for the guards. It's been a few days since Pierre's last appearance. I'd wager that he sent that letter after he found his hiding spot. Hmm, so where is that letter now? I, I burned them. It was on his orders. I had to burn every letter after reading them. I, I wasn't even allowed to share them with the rest of the society employees. Sure sounds like you're trying to use the lack of witnesses or evidence to pin the blame on Pierre. No, I swear, this time I'm only telling you the truth. Well, we can check the truth of your statements at the Opera House. I hope you know what'll be coming for you if I were to find any discrepancy between the evidence and the testimony you just gave. I know, I know, I swear I was just telling the truth. <sighs> My thanks to you both. Had it not been for you, I really don't know what would have happened to this case. Bonnie helped too. <laughs> That's true. It was all thanks to her that Bernard was finally exposed. Yeah, Bonnie Silly wants and hides behind you in the net. <laughs> and it looks like she's grown quite fond of you two as well. <sighs> then I'll leave you be. Just let me know if you find any other new leads. 
The next one seems to be unnatured. Natural. It seems that Lilith has something in her mind. Aww. I mean, we'll give her a hug if she needs one. Uh, wait. I could, I could talk to either Oi? Uh, yeah, I'll go to them first. All right. Listen. Now behave, and follow me to the interrogation room. Ow, that hurt. Ow. They're about to leave. Is really okay when Luca go? Okay, what am I? The boop. And it's a ten. Huh? Why? We can leave Billy and go to the guard. Let's first rescue the animal to the human society. Is everything really over? I still feel like the relationship between Pierre and Bernard is not as simple as it appears. Also, I've had this strange sense that something's off the entire time we've been on the case and it has only gotten worse mm. oh no Ugh. no no good i've still got nothing and i'm nearly out of energy don't force yourself all right i'll stop thinking about oh, it oh glow that's bad at the very least we've made it so that no more animals will suffer like those poor animals did and that's what i hope Let's go to the Humane Society and see if there are any animals left that might still need our help before my energy for today completely runs out. I guess we're just gonna. Oh, we are, we did. Save the kitty! The tumor may submerge in the dark under curtains. You hope all of these lies beyond the cage. Oh, well, I'm gonna avail. Like, subscribe, I'll see you on the other side.